Hey guys, it's Spence and welcome to another Prosperous Musician where we talk about music, money and muckding. Oh yes we do. <laughs> so today it's um, today's video I want to share some tips with you to providing a live show that converts an audience to raving fans. Now this is uh, part of a multi-part series and it will focus on what I like to call the P-O-W-E-R way of performing a show. Put that together, you know it spells power. So live performances, whether they are being live streamed only or, or they're live. Now I say just live streamed only because at the moment there's not a lot of live performances happening. So whether it's just being live streamed in front of a camera, a bit like this, or it's on a stage in front of many people, then the the one goal that you should have when you're performing live is to emotionally connect with the audience. I'll repeat that, as it is the most important thing to remember when you're playing live. It is your goal is to emotionally connect with the audience. So if you're playing to two people on a live stream or you're playing to 20,000 people uh, at a festival, the same rule applies. Now think about it. Why do you go to a live show? Whether it's music, it could be theatre or sport. You go for an emotional experience, to feel something, to witness something unique happening, to come away with a sense of satisfaction, unity and inspiration. So remember, remember this as it is the most important thing. And so we look at the first, it brings us to look at the first letter in the acronym of power, which is of course P. And P is for prepare. So, in the military, in the UK military anyway, there's a phrase that goes something like this. Preparation, actually it's called the five P's, you may have heard it. It's called, it goes like this. Preparation prevents piss poor performance. That's right, the five P's. Count them. Preparation prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> so, I think you get the meaning of it. But how do you prepare? Well, the first thing to prepare if you're a musician is your show. Yes, that's right. It's a show. It's not a gig. A gig is just maybe just you or you're a bunch of people on a stage playing some songs. That's a gig. You're not going to be doing that. Why? Because it won't excite you. Plain and simple. It will waste your time. It will waste the audience's time. And remember the most important part of playing live? That's right. It's to emotionally connect with the audience. So let's think about that for a moment. Your show will have a theme. Think about a show. Any show. It has a theme. It isn't just people getting up and improvising without any name or title or, or plan. It has a theme. It has a name. And it has a style. So that is where we'll begin, with the theme. So even if you're just playing um, covers gigs, or you're playing cover shows rather, if you're just playing cover songs at the local pub, then and you're promoting it, then instead of just saying, oh, you know, live tonight, I'm playing live tonight, doesn't really sound very good, but try... Live tonight, I'll use me as, a, as an example. Live tonight, Spence plays the hits of the 70s. Or what about solo 70s, Spence plays the best folk and rock hits from 50 years ago. Now, does that sound more interesting than Spence, live tonight? I think you, I think you know what I'm talking about here. If you are playing original songs, then the same applies. So, for example, you could play songs from your latest album, from your latest EP, 
uh, and name the shows after that. So, for example, like U2 did. Remember that? They did the Zoropa tour. They called it the Zoropa tour. Bruce Springsteen did the Darkness tour, which was like the Darkness on the Edge of Town tour. So, if you put a few, just a few shows together, you can call that a tour. It doesn't matter if you're just playing to five people in a pub or in a club. If you set the intention for it to be an event, then it will give you more confidence and it will give the audience something to be excited about. Remember, emotionally connecting with people. So you've got the name, you have the name, the theme and the style. So the theme, obviously, in the name will set the style. So what next? So this is the important part. It's creating the show. Again, we're not turning up and um, winging it. We do this from the set list. So the set list comes first. How we create a set list will determine how successful the show is. But I'm an artist. I just like to play whatever I feel like playing on the night, you might be saying. Well, that's all well and good. And sometimes you might pull it off, but not often. And even if you did, just think, you wouldn't be able to replicate it very easily, would you? If you just winged it one night and it went really well, you'd be like, well, what did I do right? What part of that was good? You wouldn't be able to replicate it, even with different audiences. So do you think, let's use a band like U2, for example, because they were, years ago anyway, they were one of the best bands around. You could substitute this for any band you like. It could be the Kings of Leon or Muse or the Foo Fighters or Black Eyed Peas. I don't know if they're still going. You got know what I mean? Any band, any big name band that you th- you like. Do you think for a moment that they just go, oh, what should we do? It's five minutes till we go on. What should we do tonight then, lads? You know, what song should we start with? Oh, I don't fancy that one. Let's do that. Do you think they do that? I don't think so. I don't think they wing it. And neither should you. So remember, we are emotionally connecting with our audience. And this means we need to create moments in the show. Now, this next bit, um, it isn't all my ideas in this. I am regaling this because I think it's important and I think it's very appropriate and I think it's the truth for creating a show and creating moments in the show. Now, the guy who started this or put me onto it, well, I don't know where he got it from, maybe he got it off somebody else, but I'm just giving him the due respect that he deserves. Tom Jackson, he does a lot of great stuff. He's a live music producer. So some of the stuff that I say in here is taken from his teachings and some of it is from my own, and all of it is wrapped up in my own experience and re-told, sort of told, if you like. So, But I think he's got a great moment point here about creating moments. Now, I tried to think of another way of putting it, like um, actions or creating uh, memories in the show, but really moments nails it. So how do you create moments? What does that actually mean in a show? Well, I know. Here's an example. So in a show, you could be, if it's just you and a guitar, you could play like a really raw and honest song about maybe a family member, a close loved one died, and you wrote a song about it. Imagine you're sitting there on the stool, just lit by a single spotlight, you and the acoustic guitar, and you begin strumming lightly on the A minor chord. As you're just telling the story of the song, how it came about, you're telling the story of the relationship you had with the person and how the song came around and you got the title. And then just as you finish the intro, you just let it go to silence. And you can hear a pin drop because you've been you, you're sharing this story about a, a, a tragedy. And then... Oh, start bang you come back in with a guitar and a really loud sort of um, vocal line into the song because now the audience <laughs> gasps as your emotions jump from melancholic sadness to primal anger I think you get the picture can you feel it good because you can emotion before you can emotionally connect 
with the audience. You have to emotionally connect with yourself and the song. So it doesn't matter if it's a sad song, as we just talked about, or an up-tempo dance song. You, as the performer, have to connect and express the emotions uh, of the lyrics and the rhythm. If you do this, then the, the emotions will carry. The audience will be with you. They'll follow you. They'll feel it. And that is how, an example of how, you can create moments in a show. It takes practice and it takes repetition like anything. It's not just about rehearsing the songs in a set. So don't just think about, oh, no, the song's now, so I'm ready to go. That's only half of it. That is a very important part of it, knowing the songs, being able to play them inside out, back to front. That is very important. But it doesn't stop there. And this is what a lot of people do. Me included have done this. Oh, I know the song now. I'm ready to go. No. You know the song, which is great. Now you have to perform the song. Playing the song is one thing. Performing it means you embody the song. You take every bit of emotion of every word and you feel it and you express it. And you create moments in the song even. Moments in the set, moments in the song, as I just explained. It could be the way you go from quiet and melancholic to suddenly like outrageously primal or angry or happy even. And back again. So contrast, things like that, jolts, create moments where people get emotionally drawn in. So this is up to you. This is on you to create these moments. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I'll give you some examples. You're creative. You're the artist. You work it out. So it's about taking the audience on an emotional journey, like watching a film or going to see a play or going to see like the final of a, a sports game. It's a journey. People go on the journey with you. It's got ups and downs and it's thrills and spills and you end up at the end like, oh, Wow, I really felt something today. I'm really glad I came out. I'm really loving this. I'm going to buy whatever this guy is selling because people are emotionally invested in it. So don't just take my word for it. You know what I'm talking about. You look at any live performances, well-known performers, study the moves. Don't have to copy them, but just study them. See what they do. Look at the pace, the emotions of the songs in, within the context of the set. You see that there's a story of the set. It takes you on a journey. It's not all just one layer. You'll, see, you'll start to see that even though it might look like they're ad-libbing, it might look like they're winging it, it might look like they're improvising, they're actually performing a show. And if you watch them, if you went on tour and watch them night after night, you'd see pretty much they do the same thing every night. They might change a little bit around. They're going to change the welcome, where, you know, welcome to whatever city they're in. That's all that's going to change. But generally, the show will stay pretty much the same. They might intersperse a few different songs, but it'll have the same peaks and troughs. It'll have the same moments in the show. And one of the best examples, uh, there are many, but one of the best examples is Prince. If you ever get a chance to see, if you've seen him live, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen him live, check him out. There's loads of stuff on him on YouTube. Watch his live performances. Now, apparently he would practice for hours and hours and hours before a tour. Seven days a week, 12 hours a day with his band. But he would practice on his own for hours, just with the microphone stand and the mic. Now, if you've seen him play with the microphone stand, you'll see him making love to that microphone stand. That looks like he's just decided to do it, like he's lost in the moment and he's just going with it. It ain't so. He's practiced that to death. So it looks like it's easy. It looks like he's improvising. And that's what you have to do. Not necessarily with the mic, but you know what I mean. So, again, let's go back to you 2 Bruce Springsteen, Madonna... Beyonce, Eminem, Coldplay, Ed Sheeran, Prince who just mentioned, all these big name artists, Foo Fighters, Muse. Watch them, watch their live stuff. You know, people like Robbie Williams and people like that. They put on a brilliant show, watch and take notes. Look at the, for the moments in the show. How many moments are there in the songs that they do? How many moments are in the set? 
So prepare your show by creating moments in it. And this is the first step towards turning a gig into a show and turning an audience into raving fans. Now in the next video, I will reveal the second stage of the process. And remember the letter is O. So can you guess what it stands for? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet, please do that. And hit the notification bell. We upload twice a week. I don't want you to miss anything. And uh, please share if you uh, enjoyed this. And be sure to uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think O is. And let me know how you're getting on creating your show. And I know there's no gigs at the moment. But there will be. And this applies to live streams as well. It applies to you doing a Facebook Live to two people, or it applies to, as I said, doing a, 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 an arena show, an arena tour. It's the same principle. It's putting on a show. Remember that, and you won't go wrong. See you on the next one. Be prosperous.